good, good evening everybody. My name is Joyce Barrio. I'm saved. I'm the Savior. I welcome you all to our today's at MCK Kawangware Church. The day today is the 2nd of February 2023 and it happens to be an harsh Sunday, Wednesday. Now uh, we'll get our service from Matthew 6, 31 to 34. And our theme or the, the topic for today is seeking God's kingdom and its righteousness. Before I read the scripture, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne of grace. We thank you in our hearts. We be humility. As we say thank you for this day that you've given us, that you may rejoice and be glad in it. As we start our service of our Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit be with us to teach us, to guide us, and to interpret the message of today for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We now read the scripture from Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 34. And I'll read. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For, pa for the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be hand given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Now, we ask ourselves, what is the meaning of seeking? To seek is to search or look for something. And you only search or look for something which is not displayed or something which is hidden. It is also to try and discover something. But seeking the kingdom of God, is it lost or is it hidden? And what is the kingdom of God and where is it? These are questions we need to answer as we reflect on this scripture. Now, when God created man in his own image, he kept him in a very nice garden of Eden where he was provided with everything and was given dominion over everything. Man and God had a special bond and they would communicate directly to each other. God had instructed man on what to do and what not to do, what to eat and what not to, until curiosity got the better of the woman that God had made for the man to help him, and she agreed to be lied to by Satan to the extent of disobeying God, and in the process she dragged the man into the same disobedience. God was of course not pleased with this. How could he? You have told somebody, don't do this, do this, and then go ahead and do opposite of what you have said. You cannot be pleased by that. So, through this disobedience and resultant sin, man had fallen, and the board between him and God was terribly severed. You can read all that in Genesis chapter 3. But still, they were given a chance to multiply and feed the earth a bit with the severe conditions and which they did. Their hope springs, even many generations after, kept on disobeying, sinning, falling, ah, all, all the time. But God was not done with man yet. He kept on disciplining them, punishing them when need be, but at the same time, trying to restore them back to where he wanted them to be. He loved them and would not let them. It is the same way we as parents 
keep on disciplining our children and doing everything possible to bring them back home even when they stray. And this went on and on for long with man being under, as undermanned as ever until God decided to come down to them. Through, and this he did through his only son, Jesus Christ, who assumed a human bo body by being born of a human mother and being raised by a human father to grow among human beings, to speak their own language, to eat their food, to wear their clothes, etc., in order to establish the kingdom of God on earth, in the hope that they will embrace it. In Mark chapter 15, Jesus says, and I put, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. End of quote. Now, when the Pharisees asked him when the kingdom of God would come, in the, in the book of, or in the gospel of Luke chapter 17, verse 20 to 21, he says that the kingdom of God does not come with careful observation, nor will people say, there it is. Here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God was with them. The mission of Jesus on earth was to tell people in their own language and environment about the kingdom of God, and to bring the kingdom of God to them. Of course, many, most people never believed him. But there are those who recognized him as the son of God. And they really wanted to have him and keep him with them. But in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 43, Jesus told them, and I quote, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns because that is why I was sent. End of quote. And then in verse 44 of the same, the Bible says, And he kept on preaching in the towns in the synagogues of Judea. In Luke chapter 11 verse 20, Jesus demonstrates that he was using God's power to do miracles, hence bringing the kingdom of God near to the people. Even when he was commissioning his disciples, he told them to remind all those they met about the kingdom of God being near to them. That is in Luke chapter 10 verse 9. Now remember, several prophets had prophesied about this coming of Jesus Christ to bring the kingdom of God to people. Prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, this is what he had to say. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Prince of Peace. The more Jesus stayed with the people, the more he realized that they were still far from grasping the mystery of this kingdom. He had taught them the ways of living right in the godly kingdom. What was expected of them? All they needed to know, that is from how to pray, how to store wealth in heaven, how to care for others, how to not to judge, not to worry, name them. All that he took them through, he taught them. Still, they were the same people, and only a few seemed to understand and appreciate this kingdom, or the, 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 the kingdom of God and what it entails. In the end, they even rejected him and even killed him. But Jesus being God, knew that he was not to remain with these people after all they had such little faith. So he knew he was not to remain with them forever and that he was to give himself up 
as the earth made sacrifice to atone for their sin. And this was what this was to be done purely out of love for mankind. Despite their disobedience, despite their sinful nature, God still loved them. That he was ready to sacrifice his only son. In John chapter 3, verse 16, this is a verse that almost everybody has ever memorized. It says for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Right now, we are approaching Easter, a time that we remember all this, what happened on the cross. One of the things Jesus realized, even as he was staying close to people, is that people concentrate more and put a lot of focus and emphasis on worldly material possessions, forgetting that God was their father and was capable of providing all that they needed. They focused on looking for what they thought would make them rich, recognizable, and make them, you know, feel comfort, uh, confident. They forgot that all these things come from God. And this was causing them a lot of unnecessary worry over things that were not important at all. And this then brings us to our topic for today. About seeking the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And this message is for us today as Christians. Just the same way a father knows what their children need, the same way God, who is our father, knows what we need and provides it. That is why Jesus is telling us today to stop worrying about our needs and instead focus on seeking his kingdom and his righteousness and all oh yes will be added unto us. How nice that is. Note that God's kingdom and righteousness go hand in hand. God's kingdom is all about righteousness. Our initial question then comes back to mind. What is this kingdom of God that we must seek? And I would say the kingdom of God where, is where God reigns and his power is manifested and experienced. And what kind of kingdom is this? Considering God is no longer physically visible to us. Again, I would say it is a spiritual kingdom and not an other one. We can also say it is the eternal kingdom prophesied in the Old Testament and revealed in the New Testament. In Isaiah 9-7, it talks of the increase of his government and peace that will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Jesus accomplished this as we have already seen. This is the kingdom that we must get down to us in prayer. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus asks us to pray that God's kingdom come to us and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, how do we seek or get this kingdom to come down? One, by conquering sin in our lives and focusing on holiness and righteous actions, the way Jesus did or taught us. Number two, by displaying the fruits of the Holy Spirit, that is love, joy, peace, suffering for Christ, mercy, social justice, etc. Name them. Number three, by setting our minds on the things above and not concentrate on worldly matters. 
The book of Matthew talks a lot about that. Also, Colossians 3, verse 2. Number four, by establishing a good relationship with God, by doing what pleases him only, one of which is keeping his commandments. Number five, by praying continually and seeking guidance of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 26, verse 39, we see Jesus himself kept on praying several times and seeking guidance from God. And in verse 41 of that, he tells us to watch and pray so as to avoid being tempted to sin. Number six, by guarding our hearts so that whatever comes out of it is right. That is as in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Number seven, by reading God's word continually so as to know the truth about God's kingdom. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says that he is the way, the tr truth, and the life, and that no one can go to the Father except through him. That means we have to accept Christ first and be saved so as to gain access to the Father. Anyone who knows Jesus knows God because they are one. God is the one and the one is the truth and can guide us into his kingdom. Number eight, by obeying God's commandments. We cannot run away from this. We have to keep God's commandments if we really have to enter this kingdom or to realize how to fight the kingdom of God. Number nine, by worshiping God as this creates intimacy with him. Hence, we get to experience his presence and this we find in Psalms 100, verse 2 to 3. We can also get fight uh, this kingdom by repentance. Today is Hash Wednesday and this marks the onset of the rent period. The rent period is a time to reflect on what God has done for us by giving us a chance at salvation through the death of his son Jesus Christ on the cross and also giving us hope through the resurrection of this same son. It is a time to repent, to pray, to fast, to give to the poor and deny ourselves the pleasures of this life. That is all, what, what rent is all about. Number 11, through giving and praise, as in Psalms 100, verse 4, that tells us to enter its gates with thanksgiving and its courts with praise, giving thanks to God and praises to Him, to His name. Number 12, by, go, by doing God's will, we have to know what is the will of God for us so that we can do it. And by doing that, we will be able to live in God's kingdom. Then we may ask, oh, uh, who qualifies for God's kingdom? Yes, we will all seek the kingdom, we will seek righteousness. But at what point do we qualify for it? Now, those who qualify for God's kingdom, one, are those who are born of water and spirit. John chapter 3 verse 5 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless what is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Number two, those who are like little children, you know, little children are always innocent, they are trusting, they are obedient, name it. These are qualities that God looks for, for the people who will inherit his kingdom. And Jesus, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, he says, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. 
For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as this. Mark the ones such as this. Meaning, anybody who has the characteristics of an innocent child is the one who will enter the kingdom of God. Three, those who are poor in spirit. In one of the Beatitudes of Jesus, he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is Matthew 5, verse 3. When you are poor, in a whatever way, you go looking for what you don't have. If you are poor in spirit, you will pursue spiritual wealth and knowledge. And in the process, you will find God and his kingdom. Number four, those who are, those who are pure in heart. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, another beatitude, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in heart, for they, sorry, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Meaning, they will have access to God's kingdom. Otherwise, how else can they see him unless they have access to where he dwells? A pure heart means it is full of righteousness. Number six, those who do not worship the worldly wealth, because those who do will not enter the kingdom of God. In Mark chapter 10, 25, it says, that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Imagine that, a camel going through a needle, the eye of a needle, small as it is. That means how difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And mark you, there is nothing wrong with being rich if it is God given as blessings. If your wealth is given by God as blessings, then you, there is nothing wrong with that. But if it is the one which will make you lose focus on God, the one which will make you look, look down on others, the one that will make you become arrogant and worship it, then you and the kingdom of God will be total strangers to one another. Trust me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us seek this kingdom of God and his righteousness. And God, who knows all our other needs, will automatically provide for us. We need not to worry over small, small things like food, clothing, shelter, etc. Because our God knows we need them and he is lent to provide for them. Let us seek his kingdom through repenting our sins as do, and doing what is expected of us. Let us follow what Jesus has taught us. And as we go into this rent and Easter period, let us focus more on godly things. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come to you once again, thanking you for this chance you have given us to hear your word. Father Almighty, we don't take it for granted that we can stand here and peacefully share your word. My prayer, Lord, this evening is that whoever has come across this message will be uplifted, will be reminded, will be rebuked, won't be taught about the ways of seeking the kingdom, your kingdom, and its righteousness, and that, Lord, you are the provider of any other need. Lord, help us not to worry about an important thing, because they all come from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.